Wow, 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 wow. This might be the brokenest, which is now my favorite word, PlayStation 5 HDMI port I've seen so far. It is disastrous. It doesn't look horrendous from that angle, right? If I, if I turn the board, look at that. Try and get a better angle. I mean, any angle at this point is shocking. The casing around the HDMI port as well, the plastic is cracked. I think the customer said the PlayStation fell off the side, landed on where the HDMI port was, and then that's indented the plastic and dispatched this port. If I really quickly show you under the scope, just so you can see how bad this actually is, look at that. If there is no trace damage, I will be so shocked. And the poor little capacitor that we have under here, if that's alive, it's an absolute miracle. So let me get this port off now and see what the damage is like underneath. And this is how we're looking after we've removed the port. We have a little trace here, which is still attached, but is actually probably gonna have to come off. So I'm gonna have to do a trace repair on that. Yeah, look, it's very, very weak. We are indeed missing the capacitor here as well. So that's gonna be replacing. Luckily we have the diode, the resistor and the cap that's down here, but it looks like every other trace is okay. I'm just gonna give it a quick clean up with a cotton bud and some isopropyl alcohol. This is also a really good opportunity to see if there's going to be any other pads that tear just by giving it a nice thorough clean. But it looks like we're okay. Somehow, by some miracle, we only have one torn trace on this port. I'm very shocked, very surprised, but pleasantly surprised as well. There will be an updated cost for the customer for the trace repair. So I will contact them uh, before I go ahead and just make sure that they're happy to pay. Just put some flux down on the board now. I'm just going to apply some leaded solder. Just to make the removal process a little bit easier. I feel like the ground holes are leaded. Just a little bit enough to soak through when we apply the heat. Okay. Now applying heat and hot air from the bottom of the board. And we're going to get rid of the solder that's in the ground holes. And then we'll come in in a second and remove the solder from the pads as well. Nice clean. All nice and ready now. If the customer wants to go ahead with the repair, we can do the trace repair and then place a new port on. We're now going to sort the trace wire out. And for those who would like a bit of a comparison, this is a cotton bud. This is the end of one. And that is the size of the trace that we're currently having to deal with. So with our grinding pen, we're going to slowly and carefully grind the trace. There we go. Should at this point say that the customer wants to go ahead some IPA down and there you can see we've now got our trace revealed. Now we put a tiny bit of flux around the area, put a dab of solder on our soldering iron and we just tint this area with a bit of solder just like that. And now we grab our wire and we try and get it tacked down to this really thin trace here like that. Add a tiny bit more flux aka a mountain. We're just going to tack down this wire to make sure it's got a good amount of strength to it and a good connection with the board. Perfect. I know for a fact that that wire is not going anywhere. You can use a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a brush. Clear all of the flux that was around it. And we're now just putting the wire down straight in line with the pad. Just like that. If I move this down a tiny bit, I'm just going to make sure that this is as flat to the board as can be. And I'm just going to make a little incision about here. Now we just apply some solder mask. Not that much. It fell off the tweezer. Nice. Try that again, shall we? Just put some up here just to secure it. Nice. And then we also need some down the bottom side as well to secure it in place. Perfect. Just move this out a little bit to make sure that we don't get a massive bubble. We don't want the port to be uneven. There we go. The mask is now hardened as well using our UV light. Let's tin everything up, including that wire. Just so when we drop the port on, everything's going to be okay. Coming in again with the flux. 
Just put it everywhere. Start off with the anchoring points. There we go. We also need to put this little tiny cap on as well. So we're going to do that now. After we've given everything a clean with some IPA and a little brush. Just going to make sure we've got enough solder on those pads. There we go. Let's grab the cap. Got to press record, but I have stuck it down to the solder. I'm now just reflowing it just to make sure that it's got a solid connection. Oh, which it definitely didn't. There we go. See it pop into place? Means it's secure. And now we can uh, we can put the port on. As always, we're just going to add a little bit of flux and go over everything. This part of the process isn't necessarily needed. It's just to ensure that every single connection is solid. We just have to be extra careful next to this cap. It's always tricky. Okay, just going to make sure as well that we definitely have a connection on this end one with the wire. There we go. Let's clean up. Okay, and now we're going to test. I'm going to start with this one at the end, just to make sure. What we're looking for is we're looking for this wire to move along with the pin. As you can see, the wire is moving with the pin. You see that? That is really good. Let me check all the other ones. Nice, all solid. Turn the board up and looking at it from this angle as well, we have no bridges. So that is a good job. Let's give it a test and see if it works.